Burgers, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Welcome to another edition of Shuck on a Truck, the Zoom edition. It's icy, it's cold. Nobody wants to sit on the tailgate of a truck right now, so we're staying indoors to do this interview. Brought to you by Refreshment Services Pepsi. And this week I'm joined by one of my favorites, Jirel Brock, Iowa State running back, Quincy High, former Quincy High School, multi-sport athlete, and just all-around good dude. How are you, bud? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. You seem uh, very relaxed. You should be relaxed. It's it's Christmas break, right? Oh, yeah. You know, you don't have to worry about school or anything. So that's the best part about it. The uh, I know you're back in Ames right now. Um, is it nice just to take a breather after going through the fall with football? And, 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 and it, I mean, football went all the way through the bowl game. Is it nice to take a breather and just relax a little bit? It is, especially because, like, when it, in high school, you, you have nine, ten, nine weeks in the regular season and then yep. um, after that. But in college, you're just go like you're going no matter what, like 13, 13 weeks, 14 weeks because uh, you get a bye week, 14 weeks straight of just straight football. And then that doesn't even include the summer that you had, the, right. the fall, like the fall camp that you had, the spring ball that you had. So it's um it's nice when you get a break like this after the season and you, know, you kind of just get to settle down other than, you know, going full speed every time. How much time do they give you? I mean, I know you'll get back to lifting and doing all those things in the individual workouts, but did they give you some time here to to decompress a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we get um we get from the day that the bull game is over to – I mean, we have to be back here on the 17th. So like whenever school starts um, and then after that, you know, it kind of changes just depending on how the coaches feel. Yeah. Um, if we need to get back to work sooner, or they might give us a break. Like once we get back, just to get, make sure everything's good with school and everything like that. So yeah. it kind of depends. And then spring ball will roll around and then you'll be yeah. back into winter like, workouts. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff. Spring football is going to be a little different for you this year um, since you're the man now, or one of the men, but obviously number one on the depth chart at running back. Does it change the way you approach spring ball? No. I mean, nothing's set in stone. Um, I, I still know I have to go out there and work for everything that I, that I want, um, but I don't, it doesn't change anything. It actually encourages me to work even harder now than I did then because now I'm the oldest guy in the room and we I mean we had Rory Walling um who was older than me but I was second oldest last year but it's really just making sure that I'm a good role model for the younger guys too you had those guys ahead of you as you came into that program the older guys that were in the running back room mm -hmm. how much did you learn from them to be that that leader in the running back room I learned a lot, especially from like Sheldon Crony, um, Kane Nwangwu, Roy Walling, like those guys that, you know, were there when Iowa State football was nothing. Yeah. Were there when, you know, you, you, the good times and the bad seasons, the, the bad times um, and the bad seasons, you know, I, they taught me a lot just because everything that they had to go through to make the team to what it was to what it was um last year and what it was like what it was now and what we're continuing to grow to be um they had to they had to sacrifice a lot and you know leaders I feel like everybody has a little bit of leader in them it just depends on if you are gonna be the leader that you're called to be you know a lot of people like to um you know and Coach Campbell says it all the time. This college football is a group of 18 to 22 year olds who are trying to become um, grown men, but while playing a sport, a team sport. So just making sure that you are, you know, it's easy to go off and be by yourself and um, 
want it for yourself, but when you can bring a team together and be a leader that a team needs to bring the team together, uh, you know, you you kind of surpass everything that else that you wanted to want to do. A couple of the attributes of a good leader are patience and stick to itiveness. You seem to have kind of defined those as your career has gone on. You've been patient, waiting for your opportunity. You stuck to it, worked hard. Is that something that you hope other people see and go, look, I, if I stick with it, if I'm patient, it pays off? Yeah. Um, I, you know, and I said this before a bunch of times, like I just didn't, for me, leaving wasn't an option. Right. Um, just sitting back and, Watching Kane Nwangu, who you know he got drafted fourth in the yeah. uh, fourth round in the in the draft last year, and he was a backup running back for all of his years here. Like he never started a game, um, and just seeing guys like that who stuck stuck with it because they weren't the type of person to leave. Um, and you know, people, people have a lot of reasons to leave. Um, to me, my reason just wasn't, wasn't good enough. You know, I felt like if I were to leave, my reason would have been because I wasn't playing, which I, to me felt like I was just giving up on not working harder and not going to going to work every day, trying to be the same person, trying to become the best person best version of myself I feel like that was if I left I would have been giving up on myself uh not even just this team the work you put in showed and the opportunity you got in the cheese bowl to get more carries to to be the starting running back in that game what did that mean to you to have that opportunity it was I mean a part of me wanted to say finally but (laughs) (laughs) I I felt like it was perfect timing though you know you know, Brees won't be here next year, so um, just having the opportunity to get that um, first start and, um, you know, just kind of be able to get into the feel of what that is and see, um, because preparing for a game when you're a starter is, I wouldn't say it's different because you're always supposed to prepare for games like you're a starter, but the, like, Brees was my roommate in the hotel and we were talking, he was like, yeah, you got those butterflies right now, don't you? He was like, <laughs> he was saying, yeah, I got those butterflies before every game. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it was just, like, different because I hadn't done it before. And, you know, you, you're you not ner- not so necessarily nervous, but you just want to do good for your team so much that, you know, nerves just yeah. come on. And then – you know, playing for those seniors, I was really trying to just do it for those seniors. Like, I really felt for those those seniors because those seniors changed the program, and I, I felt like that they deserved to leave on a on a on a win. And um, it, it did happen, but um, you know, we we shed a tears in the in the yeah. locker, room. and then we have some of those seniors that are going to be coming back next year. So. Right. Uh, it's always good, uh, you know, good comes around. When your first uh, first career start comes against one of the best run defenses in the uh, nation, <laughs> a little tough, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it was. But, <laughs> it, uh, you know, that, that week uh, coaches were telling me, you know, there will be good plays and there will be good, bad plays, and you just got to make a decision and go with it and then just stick your head down and run, so – I wasn't trying. I wasn't going to try and do too much, especially because they flock to the ball really well. Yeah. Um, and you know they're they're big, strong D line, and then they have really good linebackers as well. Um, so it was it was hard, but um, I felt like we did pretty well. Um, uh, running the ball, uh, kind of got behind. Um, so we kind of had to play catch up, but couldn't run the ball as much. <laughs> so um. Yeah, going against the one of the top defense, like one of the top defensive lines in the right. in the in the country. That was that was tough, but you know, I felt like it was a good challenge to prepare us for next year. You know, we had a lot of young, um, 
not a lot of young guys, but we had pretty much a, a team that's going to be playing next year, playing in that game. You know, we had Tyler Miller at left tackle. We had um, H- uh, Jared Hufford at left guard. We moved Trevor Downing to center yep. we'll, we'll, next year. Um, Daryl Simmons at right guard. And then, I mean, we had a senior in Derek Schwager at um, right tackle. So it was a, I think it was a good test for the line to kind of just get that and see because that was probably, other than Oklahoma, I can't see any other defensive line being as good as them. True. We're, uh, we're talking with Jirel Brock here on Shuck on a Truck, the Zoom edition, brought to you by Refreshment Services Pepsi. Um, obviously, there was a lot of chatter on social media, especially from your hometown people excited about your opportunity. I, I know you're on social media, but what was it like to feel that love from the Quincy community and then knowing that people were, were ready to watch and ready to cheer you on? Um, no, it, it was, it was nice. It was because, you know, when I was in high school, I got all of that. That was like four years ago. <laughs> so, um, no, it was, it was nice seeing, you know, seeing the love that people were, um, people were watching and um, that they wanted to see me do good and I really appreciated it um, you know it's easy it's easy to just cheer for cheer for Quincy High School but when you can follow somebody to college too and, and still kind of um, wish that they do good and you know it wasn't even just QHS like fans either it was Q and D as well so like just being able to um, see people cheering for you and uh wishing you the best it's always nice does it uh, and obviously you've been away at college for a few years now do, do moments like that seeing the that the the Quincy fans whether it's Notre Dame Quincy High just Quincy fans in general are showing you respect and 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 appreciation for what you're doing does that remind you that this is a special place to grow up it is and I, I was talking about it with my um my dad the other day um Quincy is probably one of the best places that someone could grow, like raise a family because of how, you know, I, I would raise my family in Quincy because I know that you, like, I know people there, but like, it's easy to meet people there and it's easy, easy to get along with people there because yeah. everybody is so, um, all right. I wouldn't say everybody, but most are so, uh, just, like good common people like yeah. you know you're not gonna run into a, a bunch of um people that are the type of people to step on somebody else to get to get higher you know what i mean um the they're the people that are gonna bring you up with them and uh and that's what i i'm really grateful for the quincy community for that i think you've kind of found that in ames iowa as well my time's being there covering events and i've got family that lives there Ames, Iowa is, is similar in a lot of ways to – it's bigger, but it's similar in a lot of ways to Quincy. Oh, I think without Iowa State College, I think Ames is Quincy. Yeah. No, like I – and I and I said that before I even came here. I feel like that's why I fell in love with Ames is because it was just like Quincy. It was kind of really close. You know, there's no professional sports here in Iowa, so it's either Iowa or Iowa State. So all right. the fans can go to either one of those games. And um, and I I see I see a lot of Quincy in Iowa and Ames, Iowa. Yeah. How excited was your family to be able to 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 see you on the field for the bowl game? I think the most excited person was my mom, <laughs> which probably doesn't surprise you. But no, not at uh, all. My mom was really excited. My dad was really excited for me just to have the opportunity. Um, my mom, my dad, my brother, my niece, my sister who lives in Atlanta, they all came to the game. Awesome. So, um, it was really nice to just be able to have those, my family there and, um, you know, see the start of something that I hope continues. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it was, that was just, I feel like that was just the beginning for us and, for well for me and for the the direction that we're going um with this team you know i felt like we put up a really good a really good fight against a really really good team 
um, and we're in it down to the last second. So, um, you know, it, it's something that we'll definitely just look at and grow, and grow on. And, uh, you know, I can't wait for next year. What does that family support system mean to you? Because your family's always been there, whether it was high school or college, your family's always been behind you. Everything, you know, I, and my mom says it all the time, you know, without family, we have nothing. So, um, you know, friends come and go, uh, but family is forever. And they've always, you know, my family's always been really big in the sports, you know, um, and just having, having somebody who, is playing college football it gives our family something to talk about and gives our family something to watch and um especially my mom's side of the family like uh the gay boy the gay side they love yeah. watching talk about it all the time um you know they'll just and they're always there to support me a few good athletes on that side of the family just a few just a few the uh Obviously, you'll have spring ball, you'll have summer workouts, and then obviously next fall we'll get here probably quicker than any of us realize it'll get here. Between now and then, to make sure you're prepared for an opportunity to get more carries and be more be a bigger factor, what do you have to do? I have to continue trying to be the same person every day. And – uh, and coach talks about it all the time. If you're the same person every day, I mean, there's you're you're becoming the best version of yourself. I mean, you got to be good every day, but you yeah. got to be the same every day. You can't come in, you can't let outside things affect you when you come into the building. You can't um, have a good have a really good day one one day and then be off the next day. Um, so just making sure that you know, obviously in the weight room, that stuff will that stuff will all come but just make, making sure that i become, become the best version of myself by you know getting one percent better every day is that easy to do knowing that this coaching staff and the people around you have allowed you to be you they haven't tried to change you you're still you're still Jirel moving forward right um i wouldn't say it's easy to do because college football is hard. You know, you have. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. You have good. You have bad. You have good and bad days. But just trying to limit the amount of bad days that you have. That's the. That's the big part. Because you're going to have a. Like. You're going to have bad days. Like. Best players have bad days. Um, but it's just limiting those. To where. Maybe. Those bad days don't stick out so much. Because how many good days you have. What kind of advice? Obviously, I know you're tight with Brees Hall and, and you were roommates at the bowl game and everything. What kind of advice did he give you or any? Did he did he say anything about taking over this opportunity? Not, I mean, not really. We kind of just talk, but we really don't talk football when we talk. <laughs> like, I was just talking to him this morning. Yeah. We don't talk football when we talk, really, because we – I mean, I was talking to him yesterday about his how his training is going and everything like that. Um, but I th- I think the one thing that he did say to me about like before the before the game, just play football. Like it, it's like it's football. A lot of people like try and make it seem like it's more, but it's really a kids. It's a kids game mm-hmm. that you're at a bigger, bigger and uh, more physical level. Yeah. Isn't it fun to be able to have a conversation with somebody that you're close to and and very invested in the same thing, but you don't have to talk about that because you got so many other ways of, of being close and being a friend. Yeah. Like I still talk, like I still talk to Kane. Um, and we literally, (laughs) we like don't talk about football. Maybe I'll say, uh, you look very fast on your <laughs> – as I'll say, you look very fast on your kickoff return <laughs> or something like that. But he, he texted me the other day and said, when would you get a beard? <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I had one when you were here. <laughs> but, no, like, just just the – and that's one thing that I like love about Iowa State, how close, like, all of us – like, 
the teammates we are. Like, uh, I still talk to Sheldon Crony, who was a senior my freshman year, a senior mm-hmm. and he came to the game in Dallas, and we were hanging out after the game. Like, you know what I mean? It's just so close, and it, it's brothers and family that I'll have forever. And you've got a few of those from your high school days, too. I know uh, you told me as we were preparing to do this that you got to go see Jaden Smith yeah. play for Maryville. Obviously, he's you know on the basketball team at Maryville now. So while you were on your break, you got to go see him play. Yeah, and as soon as I got into town um, on the 29th, me and Donovan went to go get chicks okay. on the river before he left for Florida. So I needed to see him before I left. But yeah. Yeah, friends that I, I mean, I was with, um drew uh chisholm a couple ago and uh, i went and saw eric stratman because his daughter abby stratman and i are very close friends you know just those people that i know that whenever i go back to quincy i always i like i have to go see them because of how close like in high school i would go over there all the time and it's just weird to not go there when i'm in quincy you gotta hit up checks on the river when you get the chance Exactly. Exactly. You have to. So, okay. So do you, have you found a place in Ames that is your kind of go-to place? Ooh. Go-to? Well, like, okay. So when you came home, you went to Chicks on the River. If, if, yeah. if you're going to take, if you're going to go back to Ames after being gone for a while, where would you go? Probably El Azteca. It's a Mexican spot. Okay. Either El Azteca or like, Boulder Tap House, something like that. Okay, put the put those on the the you gotta, list to check out when I'm in Ames. You gotta think like when we here for football and stuff, they feed us, so we ain't gotta go. Like that. <laughs> we ain't gotta go out like that. Oh, that's awesome. Well, hey man, this has been great catching up. Likewise, really happy for you for all your success, and can't wait to 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 write and talk about you more as we move forward thank you thank you i appreciate it so uh i'm matt shuckman muddy river sports editor that was shuck on a truck the zoom edition with Jirel brock brought to you by refreshment services pepsi join us again next week for another edition we get out fired up hook big ones we get out and rip it and we track them down so crack a Mountain Dew. Get out and do. Another rock and roll weekend. Burgers. Better with Pepsi.